Now, even though this game is super, super simple, you can tell that it does feel quite satisfying to watch. And even if you were to play it, you would also feel that kind of satisfaction. But why is that exactly? That is what we are going to be discussing in this video. So all that that you have seen, all those effects, particles, trails, etc., are uh, within what we call game juice or game feel, okay? Because they basically make our game pop a little bit. And well, I want to show you the main things that you can use in order to actually add this effect in any of your game, either if it is 2D, 3D, uh, if it's not a 2D endless runner as this one, whatever, uh, because these uh, concepts are fundamentals, things that you can apply to any project. So, first of all, um, the first effect that you should learn how to create that is probably quite easy to do uh, because you just require some practice is basically particles. Uh, the recommended node to do is, is a GPU particles. You also have another version, which is the uh, CPU particles. But well, in most cases, Godot just recommends the GPU particles. They are quite similar. And you can, by the way, just convert this one into a CPU particles and vice versa. Uh, so you just add this to any kind of node. In this case, the vehicle, well, when it moves, it is going to just follow that kind of smoke or engine particles that I'm trying to emulate. So indeed, it is quite, quite simple. Of course, it is quite overwhelming here, like the number of options that you have, but most of the cases for this kind of simple effects, you're always going to be toggling the same settings. You will toggle the lifetime, okay, to determine how long your particles will live for, the amount of particles that are going to be emitted, and then you probably modify, for example, the angle of your particles, okay, so that they are a little bit uh, randomized. Uh, you will also change your uh, velocity that you can put between two different constants. Uh, you would also create a scale core because as you can see they start quite big but at the end of the particle they literally become scale zero uh, you would also maybe use a color curve so for any single uh, particle you would in most cases use pretty similar options so do not feel overwhelmed by the number of options uh, because technically you are not going to be taking advantage of all of them at least if you are creating something quite simple and also more in general what you have to think of when you are adding juice is adding juice to every single interaction or thing that goes in the game because the game will still be let's say acceptable if i hide these particles and i play again it wouldn't be that bad um as you can see but it does feel quite empty if i am playing in this as a developer and i want to actually make the game pop a little bit i can think well the, the vehicle what type of interaction what type of behavior does this vehicle have Okay, it has, for example, in the process delta, it has a movement, a movement interaction, a movement behavior, actually, more than an interaction in this case. So, well, how can I make this interaction, this behavior, a little bit better, juicier, okay? Uh, in this case, with a particle, it would be a pretty uh, accurate choice. And if not, another one would be a, a trail, okay? A trail, as I have added here in the player, uh, could be added also to the, to the vehicle. And for the trail, what you just use is a line to the node, Okay, and it is quite simple, okay? You just have to determine a max point, which will be basically the length of this trail or, or this line, okay? It is the same thing. Um, and then basically you determine where you want to be drawing this trail. Uh, in this case, I just want to draw it at the player position. And then basically you write this pretty simple if statement, if points dot size, which is basically this number of points that have been created is greater than the, your max point, then you remove the point. So it's basically making sure that the trail has the length that you want. And also the cool thing about, uh, about this is that you have here a default color, but you also have a fill. So you can put a gradient, okay, and that looks quite good in the game, as, as maybe uh, you can remember that uh, it kind of like fades out. So it does look uh, quite, quite good, okay? So once again, when I wanted to adjust to the game, I thought, okay, what interactions does the player have? It has a player movement, it has a jump, so even more stuff could be added over here. Uh, I could add some particles for when the player is walking or for when right there I am finishing jumping, like I jump, okay, and I uh, ground, okay, there, there could be some particles, even a screen shake or something like that. So start thinking about that in game juice, okay? Every single interaction behavior should have something. Now, another way, and, and quite good to add game juice, would be with animations, okay? Uh, once again, I thought, okay, what interactions does the coin has? In this case, the coin is collected. That is an interaction, a behavior. So instead of just deleting the coin, you can have a collect coin animation. This is super simple. This is an animation that I use a lot for my games. 
uh, and it's basically moving the, the position up, okay? And as it is moving up, okay, I am basically um, making it completely transparent. So you can see it starts with full opacity with an alpha of 255, and it finishes with an alpha of zero, as simple as that. And also you may want to increase the scale a little bit of your coin on you, or you can do the opposite start from in this case initially it is 4.5 and uh, end it at zero okay for example let's actually do it here so that you can see the difference in this case i did it like differently just because i thought that the effect looked good but well you could do something like this maybe if you really want to and well i want to show you an example in unity because this is another game that i'm currently creating um but well once again these concepts can easily be applied to godot or to any other game engine this is a 2d rpg game okay and well you can still uh, you can from the first play you can see how well it has much more juice okay and i will actually pause the game uh, and well what juice do you see over here uh you see for example you have a trail over here in every single project that you have a trail in the in these kinds of weapons you have lots of lights you have some kind of vignette effect this kind of of black overlay over here um you have some kind of bloom or or that kind of post-processing effects to make things pop uh so as you can see you have and also you have a uh, trails once again over here is it is an effect that you will use a lot uh, you also have um i don't know what is you have well here the lights i have already mentioned them you have these particles when a projectile is hit um or well when a projectile hits something uh, you also have if i hit here something or i am hit i also have that kind of knockback and and the effect okay okay so there you have it and also uh, let's see if i have at least one enemy left i should have some um or here as you can see also when they flip okay there is some kind of animation as well so every single interaction every single thing is uh, there animated made juicier and of course, uh, there, there is also scene transitions in both games actually, but this is actually quite uh, quite interesting, okay? It does add uh, some juice, well, not maybe juice, I, I don't know if technically this kind of fade transitions are considered game juice, but well, anything that makes the experience better, I would consider it game juice. So well, anyway, let me know, what techniques of game juice do you use? Were this one useful for your game development journey? If you are serious about leveling up your Godot skills, check out my course. In less than 6 hours, you'll master Godot fundamentals while building this amazing project. Links in the description. See you there.